Welcome to the Physical and Chemical Changes Lab. This lab is all about making observations about different changes that happen to chemicals and identifying if they are chemical changes or physical changes based on those observations. Our first test is all about iodine. This is a vial containing iodine. As you can see, it's a solid room temperature. Make other observations. This is a reagent bottle containing iodine. A few small pieces of iodine are added to a 150 milliliter beaker on a ring stand. That ring stand is suspended over a Bunsen burner that we will use to heat the sample. This is an evaporating dish filled with ice. The ice will make the bottom of the evaporating dish cold for the entire experiment. A striker is used to light the Bunsen burner, and as the natural gas burns, it releases heat that is used to warm up the sample of iodine. By turning the barrel of the Bunsen burner, you can adjust the size and the shape of the Bunsen burner flame. This experiment is done inside of a fume hood to protect the experimenter from any fumes that are produced during the heating of the iodine. Let's watch what happens as we heat the iodine in the beaker. First, we see a white haze inside of the beaker, and this is water evaporating. As the beaker heats up, any water remaining inside the beaker evaporates off. What do you see now? Let's take a closer look at what's happening inside of the beaker. Notice how the bottom of the evaporating dish looks different than it did at the beginning of the experiment. Instead of being a clean white evaporating dish, there is now some sort of substance that is collected on the bottom of the cold dish. In this test, we'll be looking at the physical properties of iodine, so we can make some comparisons. This test tube is filled with cyclohexane, a clear liquid. Using a scoop, a few crystals of iodine from the reagent bottle will be added to the cyclohexane. As the test tube is flicked, the solid iodine dissolves inside of the cyclohexane. We're now going to remove the evaporating dish from the top of our beaker to see what has resulted. Using a, a scoop, scrape the bottom of the evaporating dish to remove the solid 
that has deposited itself to the bottom of the evaporating dish. As a reminder, this solid was produced as we heated solid iodine and then quickly cooled it down on an evaporating dish filled with ice. These small crystals will then be scooped up and added to a second test tube containing two milliliters of cyclohexane. The crystals have now dissolved in the cyclohexane. Both test tubes contained cyclohexane. On the left, we have a test tube with pure iodine. And on the right, we have a test tube containing the crystals that deposited themselves on the bottom of the evaporating dish after heating and cooling solid iodine. This concludes test two. In part B of the physical and chemical changes lab, we'll be looking at a chemical reaction between sodium borate and polyvinyl alcohol. On the right hand side is a large bottle of sodium borate. Approximately 15 milliliters will be measured in this graduated cylinder. The polyvinyl alcohol or PVA solution will be measured in another graduated cylinder. What are some observations that you can make about these solutions before they are mixed? The solutions are now poured together in the same 250 milliliter beaker and then quickly stirred with a popsicle stick. The resulting substance is safe to touch with your fingers. Let's see what happens when it's manipulated. It can be rolled into a ball. It can be stretched and squeezed. It can even be bounced on the table. In part C of the Physical and Chemical Changes Lab, we'll be experimenting with copper. Begin by filling two test tubes with sulfuric acid. Then with a pair of tongs, carefully drop a ball of copper turnings into the diluted sulfuric acid. Observe what happens to the copper inside of the test tube of acid. Then with a pair of test tube clamps, carefully heat the sulfuric acid and copper over a Bunsen burner flame. Move the test tube continuously in the flame and do not allow the solution to boil.
The second tube of sulfuric acid will now be used to compare what happens to copper when it's burned in a Bunsen burner versus being unheated. Use a striker to light the Bunsen burner. Hold the ball of copper turnings in the Bunsen burner flame using a pair of tongs. What happens to the ball of copper when you hold it in the Bunsen burner flame? Continue heating the ball of copper for about four to five minutes. How has the ball of copper changed? Wait a few minutes for the ball of copper to cool down. Once it is cooled, carefully place it into the test tube containing concentrated sulfuric acid. If the ball gets stuck in the test tube, use a tool like a glass stir rod to carefully push it down into the sulfuric acid. Is the ball of copper changing as it is submerged in sulfuric acid? We're now going to compare what happens to the ball of copper as we heat it in sulfuric acid. For the first ball of copper, we held it in the Bunsen burner flame using test tube tongs. For our second ball of copper, we're going to suspend the test tube over a Bunsen burner flame using a test tube clamp and a ring stand. Use a striker to light the Bunsen burner. And then move the Bunsen burner around to gently heat the sulfuric acid and ball of copper. Like with the sulfuric acid in our first test tube, we want to avoid boiling the solution, so we're heating it gently. Let's get a closer look at what's happening inside the test tube. This concludes part C and our experiment with copper. For part D of the physical and chemical changes lab, we'll be mixing together two solutions, potassium iodate and a starch solution. Begin by adding approximately 20 milliliters of a potassium iodate solution 
to a graduated cylinder. Then measure another 20 milliliters of the starch solution. This solution contains starch, sulfuric acid, and sodium hydrogen sulfite. What are some observations that you can make about these two solutions before they are mixed? Carefully pour the potassium iodate solution into a beaker and then add the starch solution. With a glass stir rod, mix the two solutions together. What do you think will happen? Keep your eye on the mixture. Whoa! For part E of the physical and chemical changes lab, we'll be looking at a reaction between three different substances, sodium bicarbonate, calcium chloride, and phenol red. We'll be doing this reaction inside of a Ziploc bag that is sealed. Begin by adding one teaspoon of sodium bicarbonate to the Ziploc bag. Then add one teaspoon of solid calcium chloride. Using a graduated cylinder, measure approximately 10 milliliters of phenol red indicator solution. Instead of adding the phenol red directly to the bag, instead pour it into a small beaker. Then place the beaker inside of the bag. Do not allow the liquid and the solids to mix just yet. Squeeze the air out of the bag and seal it. Initially, the temperature of the bag is 20 degrees Celsius. Tip over the small beaker and allow the liquids and the solids to mix. Continue to manipulate the solid and liquid mixture. Note any temperature changes, any color changes, and what is happening to the bag itself. This concludes part E.